All right, here we are in unit or section 8.6, which kind of changes topics a little bit. It, shil, it still uses the word rational, but we're going to now talk about radicals, specifically radical expressions that have rational exponents. Now, some definitions for you. A radical expression is any expression that has a root symbol, the root symbol being the xth root of y in it. Could be square root, it could be cube root, it could be fourth root, it could be fifth root. And in my green box are some examples of some radical expressions. The third root of x to the fourth, the square root of 4xy to the third, the seventh root of 95. Those are examples of radicals because they have a root symbol. Now, rational expressions are those roots that have fractional exponents, such as these examples, 10 to the 5 thirds power, or x to the half, or parenthesis xy to the 3 fourths. That's what we're going to deal with here in the last part of Unit 8, rational exponents that are part of radicals. So, what does rational exponents mean? Maybe the most important thing to know is the denominator is the power. I don't know if I want to use the word power. Let's use uh, the z root, like the fourth root, fifth root, etc. That goes on the outside of the root symbol. The numerator is the power inside the root symbol. Okay? Now, for instance, I would write this as the z root of x to the y power. That's what that means. Make sure you memorize that. Now, one of the most important fractional exponents is a half. A half means square root. So if I was going to write x to the 1 half as a radical, it would be the square root of x because the 2 goes on the outside and we never write the 2 people. It's understood that that's square root. And the x, the first, becomes the power of x, which we also don't write a 1. So for instance, let's go down to the third one. The third one, if I wanted to change that to a radical exponent, I would write square root, because the bottom number is a 2, of 64, and then the 3 goes in here, 64 to the third power. That would be what 3 halves mean. Okay, now let's go back to the middle one. Here I have x times y. Now, I could write this one of two ways. I could either write this as the fourth root of xy to the third power with parentheses and the 3 on the outside because the 3 applies to both of them. Or, and I'm going to go down here for the second half of this, or I could split that up and write it as the fourth root of x to the third times the fourth root of y to the third. Since the 3 fourths applies to both letters, I can write it as such like this. Either way, I would accept. All right, so that's taking fractional exponents and writing them as radicals. How about going the other way? Let's take radicals and write them as fractional exponents. Well, the first one, w, if you remember, this number becomes the denominator. I'm going to abbreviate. The number on the outside is the denominator, and that power there becomes the numerator. So really, this becomes w to the 2 sevenths power. Next one. This one would become 6 to the 5 halves power. Okay, very good. We're doing great here. The next one. That's going to be xy in parentheses to the 8 thirds power, which is also the same as x to the 8 thirds, y to the 8 thirds, 
using your uh, power properties because it applies to both. And how about the last one? Well, the last one's got a couple of pieces in it. And if we're going to write this out, you could write this as, well, you got to break this apart because the 12 only applies to the x. So therefore, the power of 16 is 1. I would write this as 16 to the 1 fourth power times x to the 12 fourths power. I hope you all understand that because the power of 16 is 1 and the power of 12, x is 12. Now this part, if they wanted you to simplify it, actually simplifies to the number 2 because this is the fourth root of 16, which is equal to 2. And this part right here, 12 fourths, we always want to reduce our fractions. That would just be x to the third, which would be probably the most accepted answer. All right, fantastic. All right, four more problems. If you want to pause the video, write these down. We are going to simplify these using rational exponents. All right, let's do the first one. Number one, square or cube root symbol. 27 is to the first power. So I can write this as 27 to the 1 third power, x to the 6 thirds power, and y to the 8 thirds power. All right, now, how do I simplify this? Well, the way I want you to simplify this is 27 to the 1 third power. That's the cube root of 27. That actually works out to be the number 3 x to the 6 thirds. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so that's x squared. Now this guy right here, 8 thirds, that doesn't work out perfectly. But what's the biggest number in 8 that 3 goes into? Well, that would be 6. So I could write this as y to the 6 thirds times y to the 2 thirds power because this particular piece if you have the bases the same, you always add the powers. 6 thirds plus 2 thirds is 8 thirds. Now, why did I do that? Because 6 thirds is reducible. I can write this as 3x squared, and this piece right here, 6 thirds is the same as y squared, and then this numerator, this fraction is already now uh, in reduced form. It is not an improper fraction. You don't want to leave them improper. So therefore, the last part we will put back into radical form, which would be the third root of y squared. And that is the simplification of problem number one. All right, problem number two. I noticed the, the root numbers are the same. Therefore, we learned this earlier this year, you can times together what's in the inside. That's the fourth root of x to the fifth times x to the fifth. You can put those together if the roots are the same, or the root numbers are the same. Well, what do you do? You all know you add the powers. This would be the fourth root of x to the tenth, 5 plus 5, which is the same. I'm going to put a plus symbol here just so you remember it's plus. Now, that's the same as x to the 10 over 4 power. Okay, so what, how many times does 4 go into 10? Well, 4 goes into 10 twice, which is 8. So I can write this as x to the 8 fourths times x to the 2 fourths, because 8 fourths plus 2 fourths is 10 fourths. Now, why does that help us? Well, because this piece right here becomes x squared, and this fraction reduces to a half, and a half is the same as the square root symbol. We learned that on a prior slide, and there is my simplification of this problem. All right, next one. Divide. Fifth root of 32 divided by x to the seventh. By root properties, which you learned already this year, this is the fifth root of 32 divided by the fifth root of x to the seventh. 
Okay, well, that's easy. The fifth root of 32 is 2. That's easy. That's the top's done. The bottom now becomes x to the 7 fifths power, which, if I break that apart, 5 goes into 7 one time. So, therefore, that's x to the 5 fifths power times x to the 2 fifths power. 5 fifths plus 2 fifths is 7 fifths, which now becomes 2 over this part right here is x to the first, or just x, and then you're left with a reduced fraction that I can write as the fifth root, fifth root of x squared. And there you go, people. That's how you do it. And finally, that was problem three, and finally number four. Number four is a different creature because if you notice, the root numbers are different. That's squared, that's cubed. You cannot put them together. Not. So I got to do this separately. There is a time sign here. This would be x to the 5 thirds power times x to the 5 halves power. Okay, well, I'm going to have to break this guy apart. I am going to have to do it this way. How many thirds are in 5? Well, there's 1. So that's x to the 3 thirds times x to the 2 thirds, because 3 thirds plus 2 thirds is 5. And the second part, how many times does 2 go into 5? That would be twice, which would be x to the 4 halves power times x to the 1 half power. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, this part becomes x to the first, and this part becomes x to the second. Now, those I'm going to be able to put together here in just a second. And these parts in the box, x to the two-thirds, that's going to have to stay that way. Cube root of x squared times, and this part right here is square root of x. So... The last thing I can do is put these two together because they're now outside the square roots. x to the first times x squared. You all know you add the powers. That becomes x to the third. And then I have to leave my other ones alone. There's nothing else I can do with, with them. So that would be the cube root of x squared times the square root of x. I cannot combine those together. Different roots, and I am done. People, that's what section 8.6 is all about, simplifying and using radicals and rational fractions for exponents.